amen and amen and amen. Well, good evening, everybody. What a joy to be with you tonight. Well, just like you, I'm right here in the comfort of my home, uh, bringing the word of God to us tonight. Like you know, the whole city is on lockdown until April the 3rd. But we know that with our God, there is no distance in the spirit. We might not be in the, in the church building worshiping, but we can worship in our homes. And that's the beautiful thing about technology. And that's the beautiful thing about our God, who is the God of possibilities. He always makes the impossible possible. Again, tonight, it's our regular Bible study. And tonight, I just want to um, use this time to just share something God laid upon my heart. Uh, normally on a last Wednesday like this, we would be having like a question and answer interactive time, but we can still do that. However, the Holy Spirit will be the one answering our questions. But tonight, I want to look at, you know, um, a very important topic uh, just briefly with us tonight. And, um, and let's trust the Holy Spirit to do something amazing in our lives. Come on, someone say amen to that. So get your pen and paper get something to write down with or you can jotle, you can jot down on your um, smart device but whatever the case may be make sure you're participating and God will do amazingly in your life in the mighty name of Jesus tonight I want to begin from um, a very famous verse of scripture Psalm 91 we're going to read it together from verse 1 through 8 Psalm 91 from verse 1 to 8 through eight is right there on the screen let's read together one to go he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty verse two i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust verse three surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the father and from the perilous pestilence Verse 4, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Come on, verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Verse 6, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays wait at noonday come on verse 7 a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you verse 8 as loud as you can only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked come on somebody say amen to that that's one of those you know amazing scriptures that we have in uh, the Bible and based on that scripture I'm speaking to us briefly tonight in what I've titled keys to divine protection in a crisis keys to divine protection in a crisis this is the time for each and every one of us to believe God for divine protection because of what's going on in the in the world today this is the time to look onto God for divine protection. You see, like I've always said, you can't stop crisis from happening. However, you can seek God's divine protection in a crisis. And that's what God wants to show us tonight. Life is about battles and blessings, battles and blessings. You've heard me say that time and time again. So in the world, we will have tribulation. Jesus guaranteed that. But one of the things that we can do is to seek God's divine protection in a crisis. And this, there is no better time to do that than right now because of what we're going through as a people, because of what's going through, what's going on in our world. And one of the things that God has given to us is his word. God's word is the foundation for any kind of protection that you're looking for. In God's word, we find the keys for divine protection. In God's word, we find the secrets for divine protection. And this psalm that we just read is one of those chapters in the Bible that is loaded with the keys 
for divine protection in a crisis. It's not just a crisis that we're going through right now in the world. It could be a crisis in your marriage, a crisis in your business, a crisis in your family, a crisis in any area or any aspect of your life. There are keys to divine protection when you're going through a crisis. And I want to share those keys with us tonight. So what are these keys, you know, for my divine protection when I'm going through a crisis? Well, write it down. Number one, I must stay in God's secret place. I must stay in in God's secret place. We see that in verse 1 of Psalm 91 that we read. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to me. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you must know and understand that you are divinely covered. You are in, you, you dwell under God god's protection under the shelter of god you are in god's secret place as a follower of jesus christ you are under god's protection but just being under god's protection is not enough the key to staying on to the the key to enjoying that protection is staying in god's shelter is staying in that shelter in that secret place that he has provided for you that's one of the keys to enjoying divine protection in a crisis you must stay in the secret place of the most high because whenever there's trouble whenever there's crisis whatever you know things are not going as you expect god has a secret place that it that he hides his own god has a secret place that he keeps you know uh the ones that follow him the ones that love him the ones that he calls his own he keeps them under the shadow of his wings how do i know that how do i know that god has a secret place how do i know that he hides me in a secret place when trouble comes that's what the bible tells us look at what the bible says in psalm 25 psalm 27 verse 5 psalm 27 verse 5 the bible says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock can you see that verse of scripture anytime there's trouble Anytime there's crisis, God hides me in his secret place. God hides me in his pavilion. God hides me in his tabernacle. God sets my feet on the rock. But the key is not just him putting me in that place. The key for protection is me staying, staying in the secret place, staying in his pavilion, staying in his tabernacle. So the question is, if the key to divine protection is me staying there, staying in the secret place, what is the secret place? Or where is the secret place? Let me show you that in the Bible. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 31 verse 20. Psalm 31 verse 20. The Bible says, you shall hide them, talking about you and me, in the secret place of your presence. That's it. You shall hide us. In the secret place of your presence, from the plots of man, you shall keep us secretly in the pavilion from the strife of the tongue. So the secret place that we're talking about is God's presence. That's it. You must stay in God's presence to be divinely protected in time of crisis. The secret place that we're talking about is God's presence. It's in God's presence that you're untouchable. It's in God's presence that you're unlocatable by the arrows of the enemy. It's in God's presence that COVID-19 will not touch you or your loved ones. But the key is staying there. The Bible says that God's presence, at, in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his presence, every enemy scatters. That's how powerful his presence is. No evil can stand in his presence. No disease can stand in his presence. No affliction can st- stand in his presence. But the key to enjoying that protection is staying in his presence under God's shelter of 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 protection under God's shelter under the shelter of his presence I am protected from every arrow of the enemy that's the key 
to divine protection in a crisis. So what does it mean or how do I stay in his presence? Well, you have to keep on worshiping. Instead of worrying, your worship places you in God's presence. Your worship keeps you abiding in God's presence. Your worship it allows you to dwell in God's presence. So you must avoid worrying at this time. This is the time to take your worship to the next level. This is the time for you to, to be intentional with your worship. That's how you stay in his presence. You also stay in his presence by making sure you keep your praise going. Because praise draws God's presence and praise keeps you in God's presence. This is the time to praise and not panic. You, you must get your praise on right now. Dance all by yourself in the room. Get your family together and just praise and worship God. That's how you abide in God's presence and that's how you use that key of divine protection even in this time of crisis. This is the time to adore him instead of being anxious. So it's important we understand that. The key, one of the keys to divine protection in a crisis is staying in God's presence. And staying in God's presence means I must keep worshiping instead of worrying. I must keep praising instead of panicking. I must keep adoring God instead of being anxious. And as you do that, God promises you that he will give you his divine protection. He will protect you with his comfort. He will protect you with his care even in whatever crisis that you go through and that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's one of the keys that you can use for God's divine protection in a crisis. Number two, another key that we see from that verse of scripture, it says, I must declare my confidence in God. Another key for divine protection in a crisis is declaring your confidence in God. I must declare my confidence in God. Look at what it says in verse two. Verse 2 of Psalm 91, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. But what's the key there? I will say of the Lord. I will say, say of the Lord. That's one of the keys to divine protection in the crisis, declaring opening your mouth to declare your confidence in God. Listen to this. What you say during a crisis is so crucial. What you say during a crisis is so crucial. This is the time you declare boldly and confidently your trust in God. What you say is so important because you will always have what you say. That's what the Bible says. You will always have what you say. This is the time you speak what you want, not what you don't want. Don't join them to speak in failure. Don't join them to speak in fear. Don't join them in speaking sickness, diseases. This is the time you open your mouth and declare your confidence in God. This is the time to speak faith, the time to speak success, the time to speak victory, the time to speak healing. It's so important. Don't say what you don't want. This is the time to declare your confidence in God, to declare boldly that your trust is in God. Very important we understand that. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. That's what the Bible says in Joel 3.10. Joel 3.10. Let the weak say, I am strong. In other words, stop saying things as they are. Stop saying things as they are. Say things as you want them to be. Say things as they should be. So if you're weak in your body, don't say I am weak. Say I am strong. If you're sick in your body right now, don't say I am sick. Say I am healed. And as you say that, the Bible says that you will always have what you, you, always have what you say. It says whoever says to this mountain, we be thou removed and be cast into the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will come to pass. He says, you will have what you say. So this is the time for us to speak things not as they are, but as they should be. We must be like our father. In Romans 4, 17, he's the one that calls things, he's the one that calls things which do not exist as though they did. He's the one that calls things 
that are not as though they were. He's the one that declares things that are not and he calls them into being. That's what the scripture says we should do. And Job 22, 28 says you will declare a thing and he says it will be established. So there's power in your tongue. There's power in what you say. God's word in your mouth is what you should be saying right now because God's word in your mouth is so powerful. God's word in your mouth is as powerful in your mouth. You declaring it, you saying it just as it is in God's mouth because God's word never returns to him void. He says it accomplishes the plan, the purpose, the precepts for which he sends it. So it's, impo- it's so important that you watch what you say at this time. Don't join everybody else in declaring negativity. This is the time to declare faith. This is time to speak faith. This is time to, to speak you know, uh, in positive terms. And look at the results of what will happen. We see that in Psalm 91 verse 3 and 4. I love it in the New Living Translation. It says, for... As you begin to speak positively, as you begin to speak your faith in God, as you begin to declare what God says, look at what he said. He said, he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. Can you imagine that? In other words, the enemy will bow and God will protect you. The enemy will bow and God will protect you. No evil can stop the effect and the power of God's word. He said that he will rescue you from every trap and he will deliver you from every deadly disease, including COVID-19. So the enemy has no, no resistance when you declare God's word. The enemy bows when you speak God's word because you will always have what you say. God will come in and deliver you from every trap. God will come in and save you from every deadly disease. And COVID-19, the coronavirus, is one of those. So as you say it, you will see it because God's word in your mouth is as powerful in your mouth as it is in God's mouth. The next thing we see in that verse, verse 4 is that God will come and back up what you say. God will come and back up what you say. Look at what he says. He says, as you say it, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. In other words, as you begin to speak God's word, as you begin to speak and declare your confidence in God, God responds. God comes in and makes sure you are covered. God comes in and makes sure that you're sheltered. God comes in and puts his armor of protection over you. Can you see that? God comes in and confirms your word. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that he confirms the word of his servant and he performs the counsel of his messengers. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah 44 verse 26. So it's so important. What you say matters at this time. What you say is so important. Don't join them in speaking negative negativity don't join the people in speaking woe you want to speak and declare your confidence in God and as you do that you have gotten one of the keys to divine protection during a time of crisis and I see God protecting you I see God protecting your family I see God protecting your loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus this crisis will not affect you it will not affect your loved ones it will not affect those that are around you in the mighty name of Jesus if anyone around you has been affected as we speak Speak God's word as we speak the truth because it's the truth that changes things. I see the healing taking place. I see the chains being broken in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's one of the powerful keys that you can use for God's divine protection when you are going through a crisis. So number one, we said one, you must stay in the secret place. That's one of the keys. Number two, we said you must declare your confidence in God. Let me give you one more as we close tonight. One more. Number three, I must fight fear by all means. That's one of the keys to divine protection in a crisis. I must fight fear by all means. The key word there is fight. You must fight fear by all means. In other words, I must not be afraid. I must not be afraid. Whatever the case may be, this is the time 
to fight every inclination to be afraid. This is the time to fight every potential, every thought to be afraid. Whenever the thought comes to your mind, you have to do everything in your power to fight the fear. Fight the fear. Put fear where it belongs. We see that in verse 5 through 8. Verse 5 through 8 of that scripture in Psalm 91 that we've been reading. Verse 5 says, you shall not be afraid. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I shall not be afraid. And if you're sitting by yourself, put your hand upon your chest and say, I shall not be afraid. I shall not be afraid. You must not be afraid. This is not the time to be afraid. This is the time to fight fear. This is the time to do everything in your power. Every inclination to be afraid you must fight it with every fiber of your being. He says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, making 11,000. He says, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of of the wicked someone say amen to that this is the time to fight fear with every fiber of your being you know why that's so important fear makes victim of whatever it is that you fear fear makes you a victim of whatever you fear fear makes you a victim so you have to do everything in your power for you to fight fear like i've always told you Satan can't do anything until fear is present. That's why the first thing he wants to do is to make you afraid. The moment he can make you afraid, the door has been unlocked. The moment he can make you afraid, you have literally given him the key to enter into your life. That's why the Bible says in over 365 pages in the scriptures, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. When Jesus appears in the place, where there's fear, the first thing he says is fear not because Satan can't do anything, can't have access without fear, just like God can't have access without faith. So it's so important that you fight fear with every fiber of your being because if you fear, you are already defeated. If you fear, you are already a victim. If you fear, you have already said that, you know, uh, the enemy can have you. So you must fight fear with every fiber of your being. Do not be afraid. Because when you are afraid, what you fear usually becomes your reality. When you fear, your fear, especially unchecked, becomes your reality. Look at the example of the man Job. In Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. The Bible says, Job speaking here, he said, for the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. Can you see that? For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. That's what happens when you are afraid. When you fear and you leave fear unchecked. If you give fear an inch, it takes a mile. That's what happened to Job. He said, what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. That will not be your, ex your, your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at what verse 26 says. Verse 26, he says, I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. That's what happens. When you fear, you are opening the door for trouble to come. When you are afraid, when you give in to fear, you are saying, Satan, come in and ravage my life. Fear removes peace in a man's life. That's why Job didn't have any rest. So the moment you give access to fear, you are saying peace, bye-bye. You are saying rest, bye-bye. You are saying trouble comes. But that will not be our experience in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is the time that we must be fearless. Fear involves, removes your peace. Fear involves torment that's what the bible says with the ultimate purpose of destroying you you will not be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus so quickly how do i fight fear 
How do I fight fear? How do I fight fear with every fiber of my being? So that I don't become a victim. So that I don't open the door for the enemy to come in. Look at what the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Very powerful scripture. How do I fight fear and win? 1 John 4, 18. The Bible says, there is no fear in love. Can you see that? There is no fear in love. In other words, the antidote for fear is love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love so how do i fight fear and win the bible has given you the antidote the bible has given you the vaccine for fear he said love is the antidote to fight fear love is the vaccine that you use to fight fear because there is no fear in love. So your love walk in this season is so crucial. Your love walk in every season of crisis is so crucial to overcoming and to overcoming fear and staying under God's protection. There is no fear in love. So love, my love walk is the key to fighting fear and staying under God's protection. God told us in 2 Timothy 1.7, he said that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. So how do I fight fear? I have to fight fear with the power of love. Like you see in that scripture, fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. Fear is an entity. So you have to fight fear with the power power of love with the power of God's love so what does that mean it means that this is the season where I must continue in my love walk loving God and loving people Jesus says that's the greatest and most powerful commandment ever given loving God and loving people so this is the time where your love walk towards God is so important where you have to keep worshiping him like I said keep praising him Keep studying the word. Keep praying. Keep talking to God. As you're doing that, you are fortifying yourself against the spirit of fear. Keep loving people. This is the time where you need to pick up the phone. Call a loved one. Text a loved one. Text a friend. Text a colleague at work. Text someone that you've not seen. Text them to check up on them. Let them know that you are thinking and that you care for them. As you are doing that, you are fortifying yourself in God's fortress against every form of the spirit of fear. It's so important. Share the love of God. Call someone that you know that might be afraid in this season and let them know that they can be secure in God's presence. This is the time for you to, to show love to the, to the vulnerable Right now, even in this season of coronavirus, someone that can't go to the store to get groceries, go get it for them and put it on their doorstep. The, the stores are still open, but this is the time to show God's love. And the Bible says that as you're doing that, you're fighting fear. As you're doing that, you're declaring God's protection. You're garrisoning yourself against every spirit and every arrow of the enemy. And as you do that, God promises that he will now come not only protect you, but he will also divinely help you. You will not lack God's help in this season. God will help you spiritually, financially, in every aspect of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the time for you to show God's love. How do I know that God will help you? Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah 41 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. As I round up with this verse of scripture, the Bible says, fear not. Can you see again? It says, fear not. For I am with you. That's it. God promises to be with you. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Receive God's strength in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As you show God's love, as you fight the spirit of fear, God comes to help you. It comes to strengthen you. It comes to uphold you with his right hand. And if you jump to verse 13, verse 13 of that Isaiah 41, he says, God speaking here, he says, For I, the Lord your God, 
will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Come on, can you please tell yourself or your neighbor again, tell them fear not, God will help you. Fear not, God will help you. And that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. So I challenge you tonight as I close. I challenge you to use God's keys for divine protection even in this crisis. I want you to stay in God's sacred place. Keep worshiping God. Don't worry. Keep praising God. Don't panic. Keep adoring God. Stop being anxious. It's the key to staying protected. This is the time to declare boldly your confidence in God. Don't join everybody to saying all the facts that they are talking about on the news. Focus on God's word. Speak the truth. It's the truth that changes things. Declare things not as they are, but as they ought to be. And finally, do everything in every fiber of your being to fight fear by walking in love. Love God, love people. Text somebody, call somebody, help somebody. And as you do that, God promises to protect you. Do you receive that word tonight? I pray for you that in this season, you will dwell under God's divine protection in the mighty name of Jesus. You and your family will be divinely protect, protected. No arrow of the enemy will touch you or your loved ones. And I declare and decree that God will bring to a swift hand even this crisis even in our world, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, like I told you, what we know is what gives us confidence to overcome any situation and circumstance. And we know that our God is faithful. We know that this crisis has not come to stay. It has come to pass. And we know that we are not alone. We know that God is for us. God is with us. We dwell under the sacred place of the Most High. And we abide under the shadow of God's almighty wing come on bow your head and begin to thank god for his word that you have received tonight thank him for his divine protection over you and your loved ones thank him because his power is still at work father we give you all the glory we celebrate you because you are good your power your presence is still at work on the earth and we your people will continue to dwell under your kind of glory that will be our experience in the mighty name of jesus Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, as our custom is, we are also going to take communion. Communion is also one of those keys that God uses for our divine protection. So quickly, go ahead and get your communion. You can get, you know, a piece of bread, a piece of crackers for, for the body or juice, you know, or apple juice, orange juice, or even water. Quickly go get that, go get that. As you go get that, I want to remind you that God has given us the instruction to take communion. He said, as often as we partake of the communion, we have his life. And when you have God's life, you are divinely protected. Because Jesus' life was a life, you know, free of sickness, of disease, of affliction, of recession, of whatever kind. So as we do that, we are experiencing that same virtue if you are sick in your body i pray that as we take communion tonight the power of god touches you the power of god turns that sickness to divine healing in the mighty name of jesus god is able to heal even you that you are infected with the coronavirus you just have to believe and as we take communion tonight that will be your experience in the mighty name of jesus come on lift up the elements of communion even lift it up high right now as i bless it Come and lift it up high. Father, Lord, we thank you for this privilege to partake of the Holy Communion. I sanctify the bread and I sanctify even the blood. I declare and decree that your presence and your power comes on these elements of the communion. They cease to be ordinary. They become the body and the blood of Jesus, full of grace and power. And as your people partake of the communion, I declare and decree the power of God flows even through your body, if you are sick in your body, the sickness is destroyed in the name of Jesus. By this communion, you are divinely protected even in this crisis. By this communion, you receive the divine wisdom of God to continue to forge ahead even in this crisis. And by this communion, you receive the quality of God's life. The quality of God's life that is above any kind of virus. 
that will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and decree over you, if you have committed any sins, your sins are forgiven. You partake of this communion worthily. If you have not given your life to Christ, I declare and decree over you that the stronghold of sin and Satan is broken over your life and you partake of this communion worthily. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, go ahead, break the bread, eat it, and go ahead and take the blood. Hallelujah. Now go ahead, in your own words, in your own way, to begin to thank God, to th celebrate him. Thank him for feeding you with his body and his blood. Thank him for his divine protection that covers you and your family. Father, we are grateful. We celebrate you for feeding us with your body and your blood tonight. Thank you for your word of divine protection that you have sent to us and our families. We give you all the glory. Thank you for your life that you have conveyed upon us. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Do you receive that? Hallelujah. I declare that your divine protection is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for us to give. You know, we never appear before God empty-handed. So this is time for us to give tonight. I know some of us might be uh, watching on the devices that we give. Giving electronically is the best way to give in DIC Cypress. So um, if you have another device, go ahead and get it right now. Let's go ahead and give. Uh, you can text the word GIVE to 832-789-4949. The information is on your screen. You can navigate to our website, dicypress.org forward slash GIVE. Or for those of us that do online banking, just go ahead and Zelle your uh, giving tonight using the Zelle uh, 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 tool on your online banking and use the church email address, admin at dicypress.org. Let's continue to give. This is the time you know, for us to continue to trust God. The world is saying there's a, uh, th that they're struggling financially, but for us in the kingdom, that will not be our experience. And the way we shield ourselves from that is to obey God in our giving. Our trust is not in money. Our trust is in God. It continues to be our source. So if you are ready with your offerings tonight, lift up that device. I know some of you will have to go ahead and do your offering after we uh, close this broadcast because you are watching on the same device you have to give with. But as we pray, this same prayer will work for you. Father, we celebrate you. We worship you for this privilege that we have to give. Thank you because we give to you in obedience to your word. We give to you because we love you. Command your blessing upon our seed. Command your blessing upon every seed sower. And let our blessings never end. Shield us from recession even in this time of crisis in the world. And thank you because we are the ones that will be testifying that there is a lifting up and there is abundance in our camp. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, go ahead. Complete your giving tonight. And as you give, the Lord of heaven bless you in Jesus' name. While we're giving... Just want to uh, close with a few announcements. By the grace of God, because of the um, instruction by our, our city government um, to stay home uh, till April the 3rd, we're going to be doing our broadcast again uh, by live stream. Please invite a friend, you know, uh, send the link as we're sending it to you out. Go on our YouTube channel and and uh, subscribe so that you can get, you know, uh, the notification the moment we are online. We are also broadcasting on Instagram Live, on Facebook, on our website, you know, and we are also going to be doing rebroadcast. So whatever the case may be, let's engage with what God is doing. And like I said, this is not the time for you to be alone. Uh, our connect groups, our small groups, we are still meeting virtually. We have people that are meet, meeting on, on Zoom, people are meeting, you know, over the phone. Uh, don't be by yourself in this season. Connect with your small groups. And if you don't have a, a small group, you're missing out. Just text the word CONNECT, the word CONNECT to 832-789-4949 and you can find a listing of all of our small groups and you can just call in you know, during their meeting time. No one needs to be alone in this season. God has not called us to live life alone. He has called us to live life together. And I pray for you that in this season, God will continue to lift you high in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and prophesy over you that this season, God will lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. We join our voices with the voices of the people of faith that this coronavirus, it 
dies to its root in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I declare and decree that God's swift judgment against this virus, against this crisis, it, it, it eliminates it now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and decree that God himself will keep us and our loved ones secure under his Shekinah glory. And I declare and decree that God's favor will locate you God's power will work for you. You will not experience recession at this time. You will experience God's abundance. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you and keep you. God makes his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. God lifts up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Someone say amen to that. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's share our dominion decree together. It's right there on the screen. Want to go. I'm a person of dominion. I live in dominion. Dominion over sin sicknesses diseases oppression poverty and all the wickedness of the devil i am an outstanding success i'm a role model i'm a pace setter i'm born to win and born to reign come on let's share the grace in the fellowship the grace want to go as loud as you can with the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore and everybody said Amen and amen. Well, like our cult culture is, come and turn to your neighbor. And if you're by yourself, put your hand upon yourself and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. And there's nothing you can do about it. I do love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you and see you next time. Bye for now.